All right, so we're gonna go for a walk and let's take a look at some of the plants that are growing right under our feet, right outside our front door in our community. Oh, cool, what a good find. This here is a mullein and this is a biennial. So this is its first year's growth. Second year's growth it will shoot up a six foot tall or taller yellow flower spike. The leaves are really fuzzy and fun to touch. You can dry them up and use them as a tea and it can help with all kinds of lung conditions like bronchitis or asthma and even allergies. This can grow along all different types of conditions. It likes what we would consider, I guess, wastelands like the side of railroad tracks, edges of fields, farmland, rock walls, things like that. I love seeing these plants. I love it when they flower. Even if they're not, always fun to touch the leaves. Let's stop right here for a moment. This right here is an excellent example of plants growing together from all around the world. This large shrub in the background here was brought to America from Asia for its beauty. This is a species of spirea and it's about to bloom. So in early summer, we'll have these beautiful white flowers. And this shrub is used a lot in the landscaping industry today. So growing right underneath the spirea hedge are some more plants from around the world. Right here we have burdock, it has these big leaves. It is from Asia and parts of Europe and it has been used for medicine and food. Right next to it is a very tasty plant. It's called garlic mustard. It's from Western Africa and Europe. This is its second year growth, has these white flowers. First year's leaves can be eaten. They can be put in soups, salads, or sandwiches and they have a garlic flavor. And I'm really excited because my favorite herb is growing in this patch. And that's mother's wort, also known as lion's heart. It's called lion's heart because in traditional Chinese medicine, it is said to help with heart related issues. I really enjoy making a tea made from this plant, but to be honest, it's an acquired taste, doesn't taste that great, I still really enjoy it. It is also said in garden folklore that you do not plant this plant in your garden. This plant will appear in your garden if you or someone in your community needs the health benefits of this plant. So we also have a plant that's native to right here in Massachusetts growing here and that is jewelweed. Jewelweed will get about five or six feet tall, will have these yellow flowers. The seeds are edible. It is said that if you brush up against poison ivy and you're afraid you're gonna get a rash, you can find this plant, crush it up, then put the juices right on the affected area and it's said to alleviate the symptoms of poison ivy. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's see what else we can find. It's so interesting to see these plants from all around the world growing together each with their own cultural and natural history. Ooh, check this out. This is gonna be pretty cool. So here's a plant that most gardeners will be familiar with, and that is bee balm or scarlet bee balm. This is a North American native, also known as Oswego tea. So the American colonists would drink Oswego tea in protest after the Boston Tea Party. They learned that from the American Indians. The flowers can also be cut off in the summer used to garnish a salad. So if you want to impress your friends and family, grow some bee balm, cut off those flowers, garnish a salad, be sure to impress everyone. Wow, this is a good size one. This right here is a maidenhair tree, also known as a ginkgo biloba. This here is the leaf, it's fan shaped. This tree is from Asia and it's one of the most common street trees here in New England. One of the reasons why that is is because it's very hardy and can survive tough urban conditions. Um, one of the reasons why it's so tough is because this tree has been around since the time of the dinosaurs. It's prehistoric, so it's a survivor. The seeds of this plant have a stinky outer coating and it's thought that dinosaurs were attracted to that smell, eat them, and then disperse the seeds. People can also eat the ginkgo below the seeds. What you want to do is put gloves on so your hands don't get smelly, harvest those seeds, wash off that stinky outer coating, and then you can cook them and then eat them. I'm told that they are a delicacy and have great nutritional value. The next time you're out and about walking in the city, make sure you give a shout out to the maidenhair tree. They are everywhere and they are providing green space in our urban areas. So we need to thank them for that. Also, you can even try the seeds if they're around and you can say that you had dinosaur food. Right, nice, good find. So this right here is a Japanese bamboo or Japanese knotweed. 
it is an invasive species. It is from Asia. Um, I make it a rule not to have vendettas against anything in wildlife or nature, even if it is an invasive. But this one comes pretty close, just because it is so invasive and it can displace local wildlife. And it's really hard to get rid of. So I do not recommend ever planting this plant in your garden. Um, one way to deal with it though, if you do have it in your yard, is to hack it back with a machete. Uh, when the new growth appears, you can take the young shoots, pull off the leaves, throw them in a pan with a little butter and saute them. So if you have an invasive species, one way to deal with it, cook it. All right. All right, so this is not your typical American lawn. Uh, your typical American lawn is a monoculture of green grass that requires heavy input of fertilizers, chemicals, and water. This is not that at all. In fact, this is a plant community of plants from all around the world, including plants right here in New England. Uh, the first plant that's growing in here is ground ivy or creeping charlie. And if you're a turf manager, you probably hate this plant, although I love it. It has beautiful purple flowers in early spring that is used as a nectar source for our native pollinators. The flowers will go away. Um, in summer and you won't even notice this plant in your lawn. Uh, the American colonists would use this plant for medicinal purpose. In fact, they actually brought it over from Europe. Uh, the other plant that we have in here is our wild strawberry. Wild strawberry is a native to New England and will have white flowers in the springtime. It's an excellent lawn alternative because it can grow in many different types of conditions and it's very hardy. Plus you get strawberries. The next plant in here is evening primrose. This is another native to New England. If allowed to grow and not mow, this would get quite tall and have yellow flowers. American Indians would take leaves from this plant, chew on them, and they believe that would give them endurance or a sense of power. We too can eat this plant, the roots and the leaves, although I have personally never tried it. So here is a different way of looking at a lawn um, that I find far more interesting. Out of all the plants that we talked about today, this one might have the most nutritional value. This is our native white pine tree, and the American Indians knew of its health benefits long before the American colonists did. A cup of white pine needle tea has more vitamin C in it than a glass of orange juice would. Uh, the American colonists would make a tea from this tree uh, to help prevent scurvy. This tree can get very, very large, and it's very common here in New England. It also has incredible wildlife value. So it's really important to all our local insects and animals here in New England. Thank you so much for going on a nature walk with me today. It was a lot of fun. I hope we can do it again sometime. Remember, nature isn't somewhere far away out there. It's right outside your front or back door, right under your feet or up in the sky.